Good morning, everybody at Tall Pines Baptist Church and on Facebook, and anyone who may be listening to the recording on our website. Good Sunday morning. It's 11 a.m., and it's time for our church service. And uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh, but before we get started, just a couple of things I wanted to share with you. Uh, my prayer is that everyone out there is doing well and no one's being affected by this virus. And uh, believe me when I say we are so looking forward to when we can meet again in person. I am thankful that we have this platform that we can share a message to you live on a Sunday morning. And we pray that you will take this message to heart. Now I will tell you here at the Woody House we've been having some plumbing issues. So there's some people outside working in the yard right now. So we may get interrupted a time or two. But that's okay. Nothing's going to stop the word of God. So we're going to uh, praise, honor, and worship Him today. A couple of announcements I want to make to you is Monday the 13th, we will be having a Red Cross blood drive at Tall Pines Baptist Church. That has not been canceled. They desperately need your blood. So make sure you contact Karen, call the church office, or go online and set up your appointment for Monday the 13th, that's the day after Easter, for the blood drive, the Red Cross blood drive at Tall Pines Baptist Church. Now next Sunday is Easter, and we will be bringing an Easter message. We are going to miss our sunrise service and our fellowship time, but um, God's word will go out and it will not come back void. He promises us that. And uh, if you have any questions about missing an Easter service, I would refer you to uh, a video I did earlier, but suffice it, suffice it to say, it's not a dishonor to God. What dishonors God is when people only worship the Savior once a year. It's something we should be doing every day. Also wanted to remind you that our offices at the church are open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, if you need any assistance, please feel free to call Carol there. Uh, you can also go to tpbconline.org. There you will find my phone number and email address and Deacon Charles Deck's phone number uh, in case you have an emergency and you need to get in touch with us. Also on tpbconline.org, uh, there is a tab there for online giving. The church still needs your support. Uh, we need your prayers. We need your service to the Lord. And we also need your, your monetary gifts as well. It does cost money to keep a building like that open and to keep a ministry going. Uh, we thank all of you who have given. God bless all of you who faithfully still tithe. And I pray that if you haven't, um, test God in this. He says we can do that. Give your tithes and offerings to the Lord through your local church. It doesn't have to be Tall Pines. Whatever local church you're a member of or you attend, that's where you give your tithes and offerings. Um, we're also continuing to take up for the Annie Armstrong Easter uh, giving. And to let you know, that's when we give for the Annie Armstrong, all of that money goes directly to the missionaries overseas. So make sure uh, you pray and give what the Lord would have you to give for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open us up with a word of prayer and then we'll get to this morning's message. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we have gathered here today, Lord, to praise, honor, worship you, to study your word, to learn, Lord, what you would have us to know. Father, we ask right now that you be with us and bless us as we study this word. May nothing come forth from my lips that doesn't bring you honor, praise, and glory. Lord, we thank you for all who are in our attendance here, and we pray for your protection and your blessing over all involved. Father, we thank you for Jesus and the cross and the blood that was spilled in our place. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. This morning we'll be in Mark chapter 11, starting out in verses 1 through 11. And if you'll get your Bibles and join me there, we will read the account of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. As they approached Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there on which no one yet has ever sat. 
Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? You say, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it back here. They went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders were saying to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They spoke to them just as Jesus had told them and gave them permission. They brought the colt to Jesus and put their coats on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their coats in the road, and others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. Those who went in front and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! Jesus entered into Jerusalem and came into the temple, and after looking around at everything, he left for Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. So Jesus comes in on a colt. The colt signified his meekness and mildness and coming in peace. You can actually read about that in Zechariah and in Isaiah. This fulfilled uh, the prophecy of the king entering in on the colt, or on the foal of a, a donkey. So Jesus enters into Jerusalem to establish his kingdom and find his rightful place as the king of the Jewish people. And the people were excited that he was there. They were yelling, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! And they laid palm branches on the road and their coats on the road. That's why today is called Palm Sunday. This signifies and memorializes the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem as the king, the last week of his earthly life until he was resurrected. And we see that the people are excited about Jesus. They love that Jesus is coming in. They're looking forward to this Savior. But for some of them, their minds will be changed. For some of them will be the very ones that stand at, his, at uh, his trial at Pilate's palace and yell, Crucify Him. And we read that account in Mark 15, verses 6 through 13. At the festival, it was Pilate's custom to release for the people a prisoner they requested. There was one named Barabbas who was in prison with rebels who had committed murder during the rebellion. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do for them as was his custom. So Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew it was because of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he would release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate again asked them, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Again they shouted, Crucify him. But why would these same people turn on their Savior? Now, not everyone that was shouting Hosanna was here shouting crucify him. And not everyone that was shouting crucify him was at the road coming in yelling Hosanna. But there was some there. And we see that their hearts are turned against Jesus. But why? Why did their hearts turn against Jesus? It was because... He didn't fit their idea of what their Messiah or Savior should look like or what he should do. You see, they were looking for freedom from the Roman rulers. They were looking for a mighty king to come in and take over from the Romans and destroy the Romans and reestablish his kingdom with the Jews then and there. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus came to establish his heavenly kingdom first. To uh, warn people about God and wrath and to set people's hearts back to God so they would repent of their sins. As a matter of fact, after his entry and the people were shouting to him, instead of going to the Romans and correcting their wicked ways, he goes to the temple. And we read this account in Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 through 13. It says, And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. So instead of going and defeating the Romans like they had wanted, he went in and set the church on its ear. He went in and disrupted their way of doing business. 
He went in there to let them know that what they were doing was dishonoring his father's house and that they needed to change the way they were doing things. And church, I think our church today can take a lesson from this. That Jesus wants more than just empty promises and people to shout Hosanna. He wants your obedience. He wants you to follow him. He's not concerned with people that just want to come to church on Sunday and be a fan of Jesus or just pay lip service to Jesus. He wants people that will honestly and earnestly seek him and worship in spirit and truth. They expected someone to ride in and save them. And they got that. They just didn't get it in the way they wanted. Today, many people reject Jesus for the very same reason. Many people hear a positive message about Jesus, about how Jesus changed someone's life and, and, and saved them from a life of alcoholism or drug abuse or self-abuse or uh, pornography or any other addictions, and it's a wonderful thing that the Holy Spirit does when he comes into the life of the believer. But Jesus didn't come so we would have it made here on earth. He didn't come so life would be easy now. Yes, he gave us life in abundance. But what Jesus came to do was prepare us for eternity, for a, a eternity in heaven with him. And those who reject Jesus are going to go to hell, a place they were never intended to go, simply because they don't like the way Jesus is portrayed in Scripture. But that is the true Jesus. That's the Jesus that we know. That's the Jesus that we study. That's what we have to go off of, is the Jesus that is quoted in Scripture. Many today will start a church, and it'll be all feel-good, happy messages. Many churches today don't like mentioning the cross or blood. They don't like mentioning the wrath of God. They don't like mentioning the fact that Jesus said to go out into all the world and make disciples. They're happy just coming together in their happy little group, sharing positive messages with one another, and forgetting the great commandment to go out and to make disciples. So folks, Jesus said in order to follow him, we had to die to self. We need to put our selfish desires away and seek him and vow to honor and worship him and to be obedient to the best of our ability. But we see that these things aren't going to happen with everybody. There's still some that are going to reject Jesus the same way that in one breath they shout Hosanna in the highest and in the next they yell crucify him. Many Christians do that today. They come in on Sunday and they sing some worship hymns, they listen to a message, they feel good about themselves, but by Monday they've forgotten all about Jesus. They've forgotten all about obedience. They've forgotten all about living as righteously as possible. And in that, they cry, crucify him. I want Jesus to be my Savior, but I'm not willing to follow all his commands. That's not what Jesus called us to do. We are called to be obedient. But in Romans 1, chapter 20, or verses 20 through 32, we read of what Paul says about people back then, and it still applies today even more, in my opinion. But starting in Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 20, it says, For his, God's, invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made, as a result, people are without excuse. That's one of the scriptures I use when I explain to people that I do not believe in atheists. That's just people running from the truth of God. In verse 21, For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became nonsense and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. Therefore God delivered them over in their cravings of their hearts to sexual impurity, so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served something created instead of the Creator, who is praised forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. But then we see what 
happens to people when they go beyond that and they reject God's teaching and God's word. In verse 26, <coughs> excuse me, it says, This is why God delivered them over to degrading passions. For even their females exchange natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The males in the same way also left natural relations with females and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Males committed shameless acts with males and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossip, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they knew full well God's just sentence that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Church, we don't support gay marriage because God doesn't allow that in his word. We don't support abortion because murdering innocent lives is not supported in God's word. It doesn't matter what my opinion is about this matter. What matters is what does God's word say about it. And folks out there looking for a church, if the church you're going to allows gay priests, gay pastors, that's not God's church. That's man's church. Anybody who goes against God's word is not serving God, but serving themselves. Many people want to follow their feelings instead of God's word. Our feelings and our heart gets us in trouble. That's why we have God's word. We are to follow his word and not our own desires. But even in 2 Timothy, Paul warns Timothy about what's going to be happening as we get closer to the end of the age. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, we see this. But know this, difficult times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, Disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. Folks, I believe in church. I believe that a body of believers should congregate every possible chance that they have. And I look forward to that day when we can get back together. But don't pull yourself together with a bunch of people who call themselves a believer, but practice something other than the Word of God. Those people are seeking to serve themselves, and their reward will be given to them on the day of judgment. We do not reject the Word of God. Find a church that preaches and practices biblical principles for everyday life. And I'm sorry if your feelings get hurt, if you believe uh, that, that gay people should be able to serve in the church. That is not what God's Word says. What God's Word says is when we become saved, we become a new creature. A leopard can change its spots if God's will is for its spots to change. Don't give up hope. God loves everyone and wants all to come to salvation. I'm not saying that someone that's gay can't be saved. But they can't serve themselves and their wants and serve God at the same time. We have to be obedient to God's word to the best of our ability. Many are led to destruction because they follow a liberal theology. They go to a liberal church. They like the fact that the preacher doesn't tell them that they need to behave themselves or act like Christians. But Christian, Jesus himself said that not everyone that cries out, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of his Father. That's in Matthew chapter 7. 
Those are Jesus' words, not mine. And folks, we need to trust the Word of God as our authority <coughs> and not the opinions of man because man's heart will lead them to destruction. We need to follow Jesus and obey His commands, not some man's commands. When Jesus tells you to do something, you do it. You need to find that local church that preaches Jesus, that preaches salvation, that preaches holy living. We are to be holy because He is holy. Christian, you are born into royalty. You are a child of the King. You need to act accordingly. You need to study God's Word for yourself, all of it, not just cherry-picking certain verses that you like, but the entirety of Facebook that are just going to church now in your living rooms. I invite you to come to Tall Pines Baptist Church once this virus is over and we're all able to congregate together again. But I want you to think about the lesson of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. As many shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! And that very same Jesus, when he would, could have been set free by Pilate, the very people he came to save yelled, Crucify him! Christian, don't you do that same thing with your life. If you call yourself a Christian, if you've been washed in the blood, make a vow to follow Jesus. Be obedient to his word. That's the only way to live. For what does it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Come to Jesus. Shout Hosanna in the highest, for Jesus is among us. God is among his people. We have the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct everything that we have and everything that we do. And folks out there listening, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's an invitation, and it's today, and it's the Holy Spirit calling to you, asking you to allow Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, to accept the free gift of salvation through the blood of the one who was crucified on the cross. And folks, as we go through this week, known as Passion Week, Jesus' last week, we need to observe the things that he may have went through that week. And we look at upcoming Good Friday. We call it good because that's the day Jesus sacrificed himself for us. So as we go through this week, remember Easter is every day. We celebrate a risen Savior and we should do it day by day, hour by hour, and minute by minute, constantly staying in prayer to the one who saved us. We praise God that he sent Jesus to die in our place. And church, it's time for the church to arise. It's time for us to go out and make disciples of everyone that we meet. Some will reject, but if one, just one, comes to salvation by the blood of Jesus, it's worth every effort that we make. Folks, I want to thank you for giving me these few minutes to be in your homes. I pray you take this message to heart and that you'll take it out and you'll share it with someone. Uh, during the week, I will post videos here and there of some things uh, that, that we can look at from Jesus' last week uh, before he was crucified. But just suffice it to say that every time you eat a meal, thank Jesus. Ask for God's blessing on it. Every time we endure a hardship, remember the one who took the beating that almost killed him. And then the same one that took the nails in his hands and feet and hung on a cross and did die so that we didn't have to. If you need to say a sinner's prayer this morning, I will leave that. But I would pray that you would please let me know that you listen to this message, leave a comment, either on the Tall Pines Facebook site or Sherry Woody's Facebook site. And also to let you know, this uh, audio will be downloaded to our website soon. And we look forward to seeing you all again in person sometime real soon. We love you guys. We miss you all terribly. And we can't wait for all of us to be back together again. 
But in the meantime, follow the social distancing rules. Don't go out in the public unless you have to. Don't go to work unless you have to. Let's get this thing squashed, get this virus out of here. But let's look to God knowing that he's got this under control. He knows when the virus is going to leave. And I believe God is using this time to prepare his church for the endurance that they need. Because, folks, there's a day coming when it's going to be too late for the lost in the world to come to Jesus. Our work is at hand. We need to go to work now. Join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and we're thankful for your message. Father, we're thankful for all the faithful out there uh, who continue to praise, honor, and worship you. Lord, we just ask for your blessings on all those, Lord, who support your church and support the ministries. Father, we ask right now that you would just be with each and every member and attender of Tall Pines Baptist Church, that you would be with everyone that uh, is listening in on this live feed. Father, we pray for your umbrella of protection. We pray, Lord, that this would end soon so we may all congregate back together. But, Lord, if it's your will that Jesus should come and rapture the church, Lord, we'll shout, Amen, praise the Lord, and hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest as he comes to gather us together in the clouds. But, Father, until that day, help us to be steadfast in spreading the gospel to all who need it. Father, if someone's praying along that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, I pray that they would just say to you, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm not worthy to enter into heaven. But Father, I understand that you sent your son Jesus to die in my place. And Father, by his death, burial, and resurrection, I can be saved by his blood that was spilled. Father, help me to take the blood of Jesus and paint it on the doorpost of my heart so that I would be covered in righteousness in your eyes. And on that day of judgment, I will be fit to enter into heaven, not by anything that I've done, but by what you did on the cross. Heavenly Father, we are thankful, and we just ask, Lord, you be with us. Lord, as we go through the rest of this week, and until we meet again, we thank you and we praise you in the precious and heavenly name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And hallelujah. Have a blessed week. Don't forget, when you do leave your homes, you're entering the mission field. Share the love of Jesus with someone. God bless. Sign and name.